This is Scott from Optics Realm. This is uh, the ZMAX tutorial number five. It's May 2012. So we're going to start with a paraxial double telecentric lens, and then we're going to convert those paraxial lenses to real catalog parts and uh, just trace some rays in a real system, as opposed to to date we've just kind of talked about the what you need to do to set up your ZMAX file. So I've got a couple slides here we're going to go through and then I'm going, I made these slides uh, years ago. We're going to attempt to redo it live in ZMAX and you'll get to see how many mistakes I make. First we're going to start with a telecentric eyepiece. So here we have a paraxial lens. It's, it's got a 20 millimeter focal length and the, the, I've got a marginal ray solve here and I'll show you what that is later if I haven't talked about that already. Uh, so it's it's focused for the paraxial marginal ray, and, and of course this is a perfectly focused beam, no aberrations whatsoever. And then actually surface one is going to be the aperture stop, and it's one focal length away. That's how you get a telecentric system, so it's 20 millimeters away. Uh, a telecentric system has a collimated chief ray, or the chief ray is perpendicular to the image plane, and the way you get that is your exit pupil is collimated. It's infinitely far away, and that's, you know, you get that by putting your aperture stop at a focus. So, in this case, uh, the layout here, the paraxial lens is your aperture stop. What I'm showing in this uh, diagram box, so if you come to this standard and you double click on this standard line, line one, you click the surface to make it your, your surface stop, and then you get this layout as I've shown here. And then you insert uh, a finite conjugate. You insert another dummy lens, another paraxial lens, and uh, you, you make it also one focal length away. I'm going to match these focal lengths so it's a one-to-one -one imager. And then I'm going to use the field, uh, enter some field data, and I'm going to put a five millimeter height in. So you get uh, this perfect system that's doubly telecentric uh, with, no magnif with unity magnification. Then I'm going to show you how to insert a lens in place of one of those paraxial lenses. Uh, and of course I'm going to use an Edmund Stock Acromat. You can choose to use whatever other supplier you'd like to go to. You could click the LEN button or you could hit F5. And it's ZMAX has a database of lenses. You can enter a bunch of different parameters here, but I'm going to do a 15 to 30 millimeter focal length with a 15 to 20 millimeter diameter. I'm going to specify a doublet, hit search, and pick this 45174. You can click layout and see what the lens likes. Wherever your line was in the lens data manager, if you hit insert, that lens will be inserted. Now you're going to have to delete the paraxial lens after you get that inserted. So in this case, we still have a praxial lens here. This last lens I've replaced with a, uh, a doublet, and I've deleted the, the, the uh, praxial lens. I've had to adjust the um, relative position, the, the distance from here to the stop. The front focal length is a little bit different than the, in the praxial case to get the chief ray collimated. Um, and again, I adjusted the stop diameter. I'm using the general command. I'm doing float by stop size. And I adjusted this to maintain an F4. And you can see down here your F4. We'll show you this in ZMAX in a little bit. So now we're going to replace the front paraxial lens with that same Edmund stock lens. Um, but when you put it in, it's going to be the crown first and then the flint. And you have to flip the element. So the way you do that, you can go Tools, Miscellaneous, Reverse Elements, or I, I like the hotkeys, uh, Control-Shift-B, and you could say which surfaces. So in this case, it's Surface 1. I've cut off the surfaces here. Surface 1 to 3, and you flip it, and you end up with this system here. If you make a mistake, remember, F3 is the Undo button. Now, once you've got the system put together, uh, you'll look at it, and you'll realize you know, my rays at the aperture stop aren't filling the stop. And that's due to pupil aberrations. So, um, and again, pupil, this is kind of a, an advanced topic. I've not talked about this in my optics uh, video podcasting yet, but I will get to it. But the entrance pupil is the effect of, so if this is your aperture stop, it's going to be imaged through this lens, and it's going to appear as a, kind of like when you look in a rifle scope, there's that black hole that you put your eye on, you match your eye with. Well, there's aberrations in that. So ZMAX is just launching out in object space a uniform grid of rays, and it's not filling this aperture stop. 
So the way around that is if you go to your general tab, J-E-N, it's this one right here, or if you do control G and then you go to this ray aiming tab, you could go to ray aiming paraxial and what it's going to do is it's going to take you from this, this green rays aren't filled, to you can see here, and I'll, I'll blow this up, you can see the rays are truly filling your aperture stop. So now let's attempt to do this in ZMAX and uh, hopefully I'll be able to recall exactly what it is we're doing. So in this case, uh, let me cut out, I get a little, uh, I like to keep my surfaces clean. I double click standard, I'm going to hit the P for paraxial. We're going to insert a surface, the insert key, we're going to make this 20 millimeters. We're going to make this focal length 20. I'm going to get rid of this, actually these two, just to make everything nice and compact. So here is, and I'm, let's see, a marginal ray, 20. Um, we're going to do zero. Layout. Oh, we don't want a glass there. This is throwing us off. We don't need a surface here. So here's our here's our system. I'm going to add some more rays just so it doesn't look too obtuse. Um, so my aperture stop is actually here. It's on surface. It's on the um, uh, paraxial lens. And I'm actually going to get rid of this. Sorry, marginal ray. So you can see our aperture stop is here. I'm going to add it to this surface. I double click the standard to get the surface properties. Make surface stop. Okay, now you really, you don't see, there's no field. So control F, or you could also do it by hitting FIE. I'm going to add a real image height of five millimeters, just like we did in my charts. We're going to update this and um, now, the reason they're clipping here is my last lens had um, apertures on. So I'm going to get rid of those. You can see by this little U right here. So I'm actually going to do Control Z to get. Uh, I can't do that. Uh, what was my aperture? I think it was, so, yeah, so 20 millimeters, F4. We want this to be 5. Okay. We're going to get rid of this one by Control Z. And it's just going to uh, maximize this semi diameter from here to here is 10 millimeters. So there is the system. Your aperture stop, one focal length away. Your focal length, you can see your chief ray, this green, the center ray here. This ray is collimated. Um, let's just do marginal and chief rays. So you can see here's your marginal ray. And uh, <laughs> it looks odd, but your marginal ray is going from here, and it's focusing down. Your chief ray goes from here and then to here. It looks odd because the rays are the same color. Now that we've got this, I'm actually going to insert two more surfaces. Well, one more. Let's also, I'm going to go to this in, uh, the standard, double click, hit P for paraxial. Um, or if you don't remember it's paraxial, you can just do this drop down. Oops, I don't want paraxial XY. That's for a toroidal. So paraxial, we're going to make it 20 millimeters away, and we're going to go 20 millimeters here. And I've got to change my drawing is from uh, this aperture stop to the image. You've got to so the the way you do that is you just you could either hit settings here or right click. So I'm going to go from there to there. Um, this focal length is wrong. That's why the ray trace looks different. Okay, so there's our doubly telecentric system. We go from object to your first lens focal length away your aperture stop, another focal length away your second lens, and then your image. So this is our paraxial telecentric, doubly telecentric one-to-one -one imager. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a lens at this paraxial uh, lens right here. I'm actually going to do it afterwards. I'm going to get rid of this marginal ray solve, fixed. We're going to insert it here. We're going to go lens 15. Okay, so here's this one. 20 millimeter focal length, entrance pupil, it's the diameter is 19. We're going to look at the layout. There's the lens, and we're going to insert it. So if I did this right, oh, insert at surface 4. Okay, 4. Close it. I have to delete this one. I'm going to do a marginal array solve. So in theory, this should update, and you can see that I'm not perfectly, I don't have my chief ray, it's not telecentric, so I'm going to adjust this, 
So we're not quite telecentric. I'm sure I can adjust this space, this thickness a little bit more, but this is going to be good enough for now. We've, now what we want to do is insert a lens up here. So I'm going to insert a surface. This is, um, so we're going to go ahead and go lens. It should be the same. We're going to insert, and we want it on surface one. OK. Close. So here's the lens, and you can see the crown is first. We don't want that. These are designed to be infinite conjugate on this side. This is operating correctly, but I have to flip this lens. So you could, you could do the pull down. What I like to do is highlight, control, shift, B. It's set up my right surfaces and flip. So you see, and it's uh, clean. I'm going to do unzoom, control, end. So you can see now that it's, um, it's not collimated coming out. So I need to adjust this. Oh, I have to delete the surface. Delete, delete. Let me put 15 here. OK, so there's our system. We're not quite collimated. This 15, and since it's symmetric, I'm just going to do a pickup from surface 3. So it's like 17.5. And you know, really, I'm doing this iteratively. Really, you should be using the merit function. That's, we've not hit that yet, so uh, my apologies. Now we should be focused. Let's get rid of these two surfaces. We've got a marginal ray solve. So here's our optical system. We're not, well, we're not collimated here. So this needs to be, let's just let me manually do this. OK, well, that's good enough. It's not quite collimated, but you can see we're pseudo collimated. The blue rays are somewhat collimated here. So that means this is in focus. Before I address the vignetting that's going on right here, I'm actually going to address this aperture stop. So our rays coming from off axis from this point, these green rays, they're not filling the aperture stop. So how do you fix that? Well, you go Control G for general. You go to ray aiming, and you go to paraxial. You can do real ray tracing to get the to fill the pupil. Uh, paraxial is faster. And I've not, I, I generally don't play with these other terms. If you have really bizarre aberrations, you can be doing using these other parameters. But this is usually good enough. Lo and behold, now we're going through our aperture stop. Unzoom this. We still have vignetting. And that's because we have an aperture right here. Let me clean this up a little bit. We have an aperture right here, this red surface, and it's clipping this ray. I could either cheat and cheat and say 12, in which case that lens, that ray gets through, but it vignettes at the next surface. I'm going to F3, and I'm going to undo it. Really what you can do is you can go to set your vignetting terms. So uh, Control F or this field, right, FIE, and you just click Set Vignetting, and you can see your terms, your decenter in Y, your um, compression in Y, and there's a little compression in X going on. So all it's a doing is all it's doing is adjusting this footprint here such that all the rays get through. I click Update, I double click it, you see all the rays get through, and there's your system. Uh, of course, there's a lot of aberrations. This is a doubly telecentric with two doublets. It's not perfect, but if you're building a doubly telecentric system, it's at least a good starting point. ZMAX homework number five. The first one, I'm, I'm just asking you to repeat what I just showed you, both in the charts and in the live ZMAX. And I've got some uh, input here. I've changed things up. 35 millimeter uh, focal length for the system, F3, F3 working, 10 millimeter diameter. It's the same I did before, magnification of uh, one unity. Really, it's negative one because your image is inverting. And use uh, stock doublets. The second one is I want you to go back to ZMAX tutorial number four with your microscope and put in real lenses where the paraxial lenses were. And just to warn you, you're going to get field curvature. Uh, it's going to look out of focus. And what field curvature is, is if you look here, this is your paraxial focus is right here. And in this case, your paraxial focus is here. So you've got a curved image plane. And that's field curvature. It's another topic for another section. Optics Realm is now on iTunes. We're ripping the YouTube audio. And you can listen to this uh, in your car on the go. The intent is to put the homework solutions there. Yeah, I know it's difficult to show ZMAX or equations or graphs on audio. But that's how we're doing it. Ed Gonzalez is administering it, and here's his email.